One of the biggest things that we hear wherever we travel outside of the Lower Mainland is the fact that the British Columbians in general seem to have forgotten where wealth is created. Uh, that you can't have good public services, you can't have good roads, education, uh, you can't enjoy the lifestyle that people enjoy in the Lower Mainland in Vancouver unless the engine of the province, mining, agriculture, forestry, tourism, is actually operating and driving revenue into the government. And I think when we talk about a post-Olympic world, a lot of uh, what has happened is the Olympics have distracted people because you could point to that and say, oh, we'll get billions of dollars in realized potential out of the Olympics. Well, now that that's gone and we're actually finding out there's not the billions of dollars, my sense from the discussions we're having here is people want us to get more grounded. They want to get back to how do we get the forest industry back on its feet in a different way. How do we get mining back up again? How do we get agriculture on its feet in, in a different way that's dealing with carbon, that's dealing with soil, that taking advantage of the 100-mile diet? So I get a sense that you know once the Olympic show is over, and I hope British Columbia hosts the best Olympics possible and our athletes do really well, but once that distraction is over, it's to get back down to some grounded reality and start creating jobs for people that support their families and give them benefits that then fund the lifestyle of the on mainland. And certainly what we heard from the folks here on the economic side is that they understand uh, that people in British Columbia may need a re-education program on how the economy of British Columbia really works. And it's not a one-off event uh, down in Whistler, Vancouver. It's a continuous good management of our resources in a sustainable fashion that creates jobs and revenue to the government.